Hey there everybody, T-Shirt Booth here for GSHelper.com. I'm about to show you something pretty amazing. Um, if you're doing a game, like a block game, like I did, like Zombie Drop or Tiny Balls, um, any game where you have a bunch of things on the scene and you can have many, many levels and you just basically different puzzles that you move the pieces around. Well, traditionally, you would have to have a new scene for every level. And uh, now with the inclusion of tables, we can eliminate that. And you can basically have um, a whole world on one scene and not have to worry about uh, memory usage and uh, that pesky loading symbol at the bottom corner every time you switch scenes. Um, you can jam-pack ten worlds all in one scene. You can actually do, you know, um, the whole game in one scene if you wanted. Um, it just depends on how much work you wanted to put into your game. Um, I've created a quick demo here. Um, it's going to be hard for me to redo this um, step by step, only because... Um, it, there, there's a, a few rules that you have to do and a few calculations and stuff like that so um, I basically already have the demo done and you can download it um, at gshelper.com for free um, and in this video right now I'm just gonna run down kind of what I've done uh, and hopefully you can follow along so let's pretend my world one has three levels and I'm only using these three pieces. Now, you can use, you know, 20 pieces if you want, 30 pieces. It's up to you. Um, and basically, what you just want to do is you want to start with all your pieces hidden out of the way. Um, it doesn't matter where you put them, just out of the way. Um, and what I've done is I've used my walls to create a box to kind of contain them in the scene. Um, so when you press preview, you only see this bottom section here because that's where the game's played. But I have all my pieces up here. And um, what I'm going to do is press preview now. And you'll see that instantly it loaded my level 1. And it put the pieces where I need them for level 1. Now I'm going to switch to level 2. And you'll see instantly, boom, the pieces are where I need them for level 2. And then I'm going to go to level 3. And again, boom, pieces are right where I need them. And I've done this all in one scene. And I've done it with very little code. Um, now, granted, keep in mind, if you have something with 40, 50 pieces uh, on a scene, I mean, that's going to slow down your game anyways um, because of the physics and, and all that stuff. But um, um, for most games, like especially Zombie Drop, I could have done this all in one scene. Um, it's truly amazing, and I'm going to show you how now. Um, I'm going to hit Home, and I'm going to go into Tables. And as you can see here, I have three tables. I have a table for block 1, table for block 2, and a table for block 3. I'm going to go back to scenes just for a second just so you can see I have block 1, block 2, and block 3. The most important thing what you need to do is first let's lay out your, your level 1 that you want to have. So let's say I want this here just like I have and I want this here. So that's my level one, okay? Obviously, it's not that fancy, and you'd have a lot more pieces and stuff, but for the sake of the demo, we're just going to use the two pieces. So what you want to do is get yourself a pen and paper, and so you know this is block one, you're going to open it up right there, and you're going to write down the X and the Y for level one. So you just do block one, level one, write down the X and Y. And then you're going to go into block two, and write, oh, that's block three, but let's pretend it's block two here. I'll just move block two here. Okay, so put open block two, and you'll block, you'll write uh, level one block two, and you'll write down the X and the Y. And then you want to do the same thing for level two. So let's say you wanted these over here. You write down the X and the Y for block one, block two, block three, whatever it is you want to do. And then you do the same thing for block, for obviously level 3. And now at level 3 I want to use this piece, so I'd put it down here. And I'd find the X and the Y for these, just by double clicking, find the X and Y where I want it to be, and write it down. Then you can move all of these back here. And now we'll go back into our table, go home, table. Now for block 1, you're going to want to make a, um, a table. Now, for block one, I only have three levels, as you can see, one, two, three. 
If you want more levels, you would just uh, do more columns. So that's level four, five, six, and so on. I'll get rid of those. Um, and then you're going to have two rows. The first row will be for X, the second row for Y. And it's simple as the, um, basically you just key in for block one, you key in the X and Y of where you want that block to be for level one. For level two, you key in where you want the block to be in X and Y and so on for level three. Now you're saying, well, what if I don't want to use a block? So let's go to level or block three, um, because I know I didn't use block three in level one and two. Um, so you'll see for level one and two, I put the block at X 160, Y 500. And what that does is it put the block go over here. It put the block back up here somewhere, roughly in the middle. Um, it'll just pile it in here, um, up and out of the way. So if you don't need the block, you just find a spot that's out of the way, and that's where you put it. I'll go back home, go back into tables, so block three. So that's my out of the way location, my out of the way location. But for level three, I want it in the game, so that's the location I want this block for level three. Now I'm going to go home, go back to scenes, and I'm going to go into block one. And you're going to see there's not much code here. Um, I have my collide rules, so it knows what to collide with. I have my accelerate down to act as my gravity. Now what I do is I have a trigger. Game.setBlocks is true. So right now, my attribute, I have um, set blocks is false. So I have a trigger here which is on this button and what it does is it sets it to true. So on my block I have when it's set to true, I want to change self position X to table value. Now I'm going to rewrite this here. I'm going to I'm going to go change attribute just so you can see. So you're going to change attribute. I'll drag this up here. Game or sorry, self position x. And now we want to find the uh, x location we need for block 1. So the first thing you're going to use is the get cell value. Okay? Now we have three options here, table, row, and column. For the table, because this is block one, we're going to use game block one. Make sure there's a comma. Now for row, we know that the x value is in row one. So I'll have row one. For column, you would simply have your game what level. So if you're level one, you're going to use column one. If you're level two, you use column two. Now I have a plus one here only because of the way I set up my next button. Um, you won't need that. You'll you'll set up your level uh, changing um, appropriately. So when you're on level two, you'll set you'll change game dot what level to two, and um, that way this knows where to put the block. And I'll just hit the OK button here and here, and I'll get rid of this one we did here. And for the Y position, it's virtually the same thing, except for row, you use row 2, because that's where your Y location is. Um, so it's cell value, bracket, game.block1 is the table, row 2, and then what column would be your game.level attribute. This way you don't have to have 100 rules for 100 different levels, you can just do this. Um, and then also you're going to probably want to add this stuff here. Um, it's basically to stop the block from moving if you um, change scenes and the blocks are falling or something. Um, you basically just uh, change attribute linear velocity x to zero, uh, linear velocity y to zero, self angular uh, velocity to zero, and rotation back to zero. So that way if the, if, the button, if the blocks are falling or moving or whatnot and you go to the next um, level, it will instantly stop them from moving, put the rotation back, and then change the position of where it needs to go. Now for, I'll go back, and for block two, it's virtually the same rules. You just copy block one, make block two, and then all you have to do is change the game.table to the table for block two. And again, for the Y, the block two. And then you can hit OK. You just copy your block again to make block three, open it up, and change the table to block three. And that's it. When I hit preview, there's level one, 
level two, level three, all in the same scene. It doesn't add to the memory, it doesn't add to the RAM, and um, you don't have any pesky loading symbols. Um, so I hope that helps someone, and um, if you guys need a little more detail uh, in another video, let me know. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Also, you can download the uh, project file for free and uh, give it a shot, and uh, I hope you uh, learned something from it, and I'll uh, see you again over at gshelper.com. Thanks, guys.